Hey everybody, welcome back to the Jewelry Bench. In today's video, I'm gonna show you a tutorial on making this infinity diamond pendant. One of my clients has a customer who wanted to have an elongated infinity pendant with a heart-shaped diamond in the middle. Working with several odd things here, and the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add the diamond. This is an odd-shaped heart diamond. It's not your, you know, perfect cut. It's got a little bit of an offset from one side to the other. It is symmetrical, a little bit on the deep side. It's about a quarter of a millimeter deeper than a traditional heart-shaped stone would be. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to add in the stone and adjust the sizes so that we can work with it. And that's what I'm doing here. The next step I want to do is typically what I, I will do when I'm working with a, an odd-shaped stone, especially one that's going to be bezel set. I usually add in a cylinder and I'll adjust the cylinder to match the shape of the uh, stone itself, making it a little bit wider and uh, taller than the stone so that I can bezel set it or create the bezel setting in CAD. Now, for some reason, I was having some issues. I'm using proportional editing here and I was trying to make the cylinder work right to, uh, to kind of mimic the shape of the heart shaped stone and I just couldn't get it to work right. So my mistake, I probably should have just traced the outline of it and gone there. And that's what I do later in the video. So I'll show you how I do it later in the video by tracing it out with a curve object and making the modification that way. Sometimes working with a cylinder can also be very difficult. Um, maybe a better way to have done this was to add the cylinder or add in a circle and then adjust the circle points across. But you can see I did a much easier job later in the video of making the bezel here. Um, so, yes, you can use some proportional editing and grab and size each of these pieces um, to mimic the shape of the stone you're working with, especially if it's an odd-shaped stone. However, uh, it didn't work good for me here. I don't know why. Maybe I was just impatient and couldn't get it the right way, and maybe I just did it wrong because I was working at night. Anyway, this is the wrong way to do it, at least for this stone and for this particular pendant, and uh, I won't bore you anymore with this. So moving on to the next step, I want to create the infinity pendant itself. Now, a great way to do this, um, especially when you have a curved object, is to work with curves. So in Blender, you can work with curved objects, make them uh, any shape you want. Here, I'm just adjusting it to set the first particular point to uh, make sure the center or the, the point of origin is the 3D cursor. And I'm going to go ahead and add a mirror modifier. Right now what I'm doing, because this has got to be about 28 millimeters long, I'm creating uh, just a plane and I'm making it 28 millimeters long and that gives me a visual representation of the dimensions of the infinity pendant. Again here I'm still using proportional editing to adjust these. It gives me a little greater uh, control over the curves because it moves the adjacent curves around with it. You don't have to do that. This is just one way to do it. I'm going to grab all of that and just kind of zoom in here, set my origin to the 3D cursor, and then I'm going to go turn on the mirror modifier. We're going to mirror it along the x-axis, so I'll go to the modifiers tab, grab the mirror modifier, make sure it's on the x. I could have set both the x and y here, but I did that a little bit later, so I'm just going to adjust the shape to get the top portion uh, the top left portion of the curve that I'm looking for for the infinity pendant. Now this is a symmetric pendant, so the greatest thing about working in symmetry is that I can adjust the shape. Now I just go ahead and add the Y axis to the mirror modifier, and you can see that by adding, by modifying just one portion of it, I'm actually changing the other three. I'm adjusting the size under the depth control, and looking at this I'm just going to move this around where I want it. I'm just going to move the, uh, the diamond and the crappy bezel that I made out of the way. So I wanted this a little bit higher. I want the infinity to be the lowest point. Okay, with that done, I'm going to go ahead and just make any little changes I need to make to this pendant here. And you can see it'll get a little snapping effect when you get those in the right place. And that's perfect. That's exactly what we want.
I was looking at the drawing from the jeweler and it looks like he's got very small ringlets on either side of the infinity pendant. So I'm gonna go ahead and add those little ringlets now by adding in a torus. And I'm gonna keep those a little bit on the small side. He doesn't, he doesn't want those too high up on the infinity pendant according to the customer's wishes. So I'm gonna put them at about uh, maybe 10 degrees from the horizon. And it may still wanna flip over. We're gonna to have to test that. Yeah, I'm gonna make this a little bit thicker so that it gives it a little more dimension. It'll, it'll print in 3D printing. And I'm just gonna move it up a little bit more so that he's got a good place to attach a chain to this. Now the chain will be attached to both sides. So once you get one done, you can go ahead and use the jewel craft tool to mirror to the X axis and put the same ring on the other side. If you have to make any changes, you can also uh, make it to both of those or just delete one and go ahead and make any changes you want to the other and then mirror it again. So I'm just making them a little thicker here just because I want them a little thicker. This pendant, the uh, infinity pendant's about two millimeters, almost two millimeters thick and I want those rings to be about a millimeter thick. So here's where I really discovered that I have to do something with this bezel, and I'm gonna start working on a new way to create this bezel here. For me, the best way to do that is to go ahead and add in a curved path. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. I'm gonna move that up and out of the way. And it's a good rule of thumb to change, if you're gonna work in symmetry, probably change the uh, center of origin or, or the origin point of whatever you're working with. And that's what I'm doing here. I'm just gonna move it around, get it to the 3D cursor. You can see I'm just kinda adding the mirror modifier so I have it, but I kinda screwed up. So we're gonna go and change the origin again. Now I'll move this point all the way down so that that point on the right of my curve is right over the 3D cursor. I'll grab that and make sure my cursor is in the middle and then I'll set the origin right there to the 3D cursor. Now if I go back and add the mirror modifier for the X axis, you can see I can go ahead again and just play around with one side and it'll mirror over to the opposite side. So here you can see I'm adjusting the left and it's adjusting the right automatically. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually use the curve uh, points and I'm just gonna keep extruding those out using the E key. And I'm gonna break those down to conform to the path of the diamond. Just like so. And now it's a good idea to uh, add some dimension to this. So once I get the path about where I want it, I'll go ahead and add some dimension to this curve. You'll see that in just a minute. Let's grab that, just move it over a little bit. I want those to be kind of touching. Now you can set this automatically so that it'll snap into place. I typically don't do that because I like to make tweaks and changes. So I'll wait till the very end to make my model um, all one piece. So again, I'm just moving around. We're gonna come back to our curve properties. I'll use the extrude tool and I'll give it some dimension on the, vertically. And one more thing, I have to add some uh, solidness or solidify this. So I'll add a solidify modifier. Now I'm going to extrude the solidify modifier along the negative axis that gives it dimension. It also keeps our, our, uh, our model with proper uh, geometry because if you, if you try to make this a little smaller from the extrusion, you'll get some weird geometry that won't conform and won't convert to a mesh very well and it won't be able to be 3D printed. So now I have this issue where I'm a little bit larger than the uh, size of the diamond so I have to adjust my points again. So I'm just going to get this centered. I'm going to change my, ori my uh, center of origin back to the center or 3D cursor. I'm going to size that down just a little bit. I'll go back into edit mode and now I can modify the path one more time. And what I want to do is keep this path on the inside of the diamond, but give myself enough dimension so that I can still use this model as a bezel set. So here, another mistake I made, I don't know why I was, wasn't thinking. Again, this was about nine o'clock at night and uh, I should have just kind of made this a little bit smaller. 
You can see when I snap that, it snaps closed. Now that's not giving me a rim for a bezel, so I'm gonna go ahead and make some more changes to this. Look at straight down, and I am going to adjust the position of all these points so that they're just over the side of the girdle of our diamond. And I'm just gonna do this one by one until I'm happy with the shape. And I want to get this to snap into position, so I'm just going to move it around until it snaps in. Boom, like that, and that's good. Now what I can do is go back to my modifier, and I can give this a little more thickness. There we go. Now my diamond is sitting on top of that, and I could use the uh, diamond as a cutter to make my bezel. I'm just going to raise that up. That gives me a good visual representation of what the diamond will look like when it's set in the bezel. And I'm just going to play with the height and thickness of this a little bit more until I get it to the point where I'm visually pleased with it. Again, this is just one way to do this. You can do this several different ways. Um, maybe you'll find my methods helpful, maybe not. Um, this whole project took me about 30 minutes to do because I did... Uh, screw up the bezel the first time, so go ahead and redo in that. It took me a little extra time. I'm going to go ahead and save my project here uh, just because I like to make sure I have multiple objects saved, multiple versions of my model. Now, once I've got everything where I want, I'm going to convert these to meshes. So I'm going to take the infinity symbol, I'm going to convert that to a mesh. By doing that, it also applies our mirror modifier and makes one infinity piece. I'm going to go ahead and make sure that bezel is a mesh also. And now the, the one thing we have to be cautious of, if these are not properly modeled, you can't join them with the union tool. You'll see here, it, it, it disappears when I use the union tool. So what you have to do is go ahead and apply a remesh modifier to these. I'm just checking the faces to make sure the faces are all pointing outward and we're good there. And now I will go ahead and make sure that this is converted to a mesh, just double checking and I'm going to go ahead and add in the remesh modifier. So I'm going to use the remesh modifier with the vortex or voxel settings at 0 0.05. And I'm going to apply that to both the bezel and the infinity symbol. And that'll recalculate the uh, geometry of each of those models, you can see here. And by doing so, I can go ahead and join those with the union tool. So both of those have been applied. I'm going to grab both of these. And using our Boolean union, I can go ahead and now they are one piece. Now I'm going to take this diamond, I'm going to duplicate it. And I'm going to use the duplicate diamond as a cutout for our bezel. Now, if you set stones for a living, or if you're a designer who's never set a stone, you have to leave the jeweler enough room to set the stone in there and then push over the side of the bezel to, tuck, to kind of sit over the girdle of the stone. So for those of you who don't set stones, you may not understand this. But for those of you who do set stones, it's important that obviously you have enough room in that. So what I'm doing here is I'm taking my duplicate diamond, I'm grabbing all the faces uh, along the perimeter of this, and I'm going to extend this up so that I have a duplicate model of the diamond that I can use as a cutter to cut a hole in the top of that bezel. So as you see there, I've got this weird shape here. I'm going to select that, then select the uh, infinity pendant, and then I'll do a Boolean difference. By doing that, I've actually cut the seat for the diamond, and that gives me or the jeweler who's going to set the stone uh, a place where I can push over the bevel, the bezel edge over the girdle and hold the stone in place. Now it's a good time to join the two loops on the infinity pendant and make this all one piece. There we go, and pretty much we're done. I have to go ahead and do a 3D print of this, so I'm going to go do that now, and I'll show you the results here. Did a quick rendering to see what it looked like. Pretty much happy with that. So here's the three images of the rendered pendant. 
and you can see it came out quite well. It's a very simple design, but it will look nice on a necklace. And of course, most importantly, here's the results of a 25 minute 3D print. I used a plain standard water washable resin to do this. This is a sample piece for the customer to see. That's the most important thing. You like to see or have a piece that the customer can hold in their hand when they see it. So that's it for this video, guys. I hope you liked it. If you did enjoy this video, please consider liking, subscribing, and sharing this video. Uh, leave a comment in the comment section below if you have any questions. I do read them all. I don't always respond, but I do respond to the good questions. Thanks for watching. I'm glad you guys enjoyed this. I hope if you got this far into it, and have a wonderful day. Happy 3D modeling.